driven around here, I've seen doors which have been blown off hinges, cars which appear to have been shunted into garage doors, windows which have been blown out, animals have been frightened as well. There's one lady telling me that her dog has certainly been worried by it. People are evacuating their children out of these houses in this area now because you can see the amount of smoke that is going up there. Now, at some point, I presume that smoke is going to come down. The police officers, certainly on the ground that I've been talking to this morning, are all wearing dust masks. So it would you would think that there will at some point be some sort of health hazard connected with this huge, huge explosion. Sir, your cameraman there is doing a great job. Maybe you could just ask for him to, or if he can hear me directly, just to pan into that house over your right shoulder or that building there, because uh, that just gives you some sort of sense of the scale of these flames. Because look, that, I mean, that's not a small building. That's what, one, two, three, four, five, about half a dozen storeys high anyway. I suppose that looks a bit like an apartment block, doesn't it? And the flames are higher than the apartment block, not to mention the smoke smoke is 10 uh, times the size of the apartment block, but even the flames I, I alone... Think, oh, sorry, Sarah, possibly, you're going to say something. Yeah, I think possibly 50 times higher than that building there. We do know that that building belongs to an industrial estate which is adjacent the Bunsfield oil depot, um, and the locals here do believe that until recently that building has been empty. Now, you would think that at 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning that if there was in there, there would be very few people at all. Um, sketchy reports coming in about injuries. We've heard that there's possibly been a few minor injuries. Um, no reports yet of any deaths, but certainly something of this size, you would expect that there would be a, at least a certain number of injuries at the very least. Well, we know that a security guard has been injured. We got that from one of our eye eyewitness reports. Sarah, this reminds me a bit, the scene, the scale of uh, one of those oil wells in Kuwait after Saddam Hussein abandoned Kuwait in the first Gulf War. Remember he set fire to all the oil wells and there were huge plumes of black smoke and people were terrified of the environmental damage. Um, I, I've been finding out a bit about this Bunsfield depot and apparently it's a major dis distribution terminal operated by Total and part owned by Texaco and it stores oil, petrol and kerosene and it supplies airports all across the region. I mean, a lot of airports in the region, including Heathrow and Luton. So it's a very big place indeed, isn't it? It is a very big place indeed. And I think that just reflected in the size of this explosion. Um, as you said, we've heard reports from virtually all over the southeast about the size of this explosion. I live about four miles away from it and my whole house shook. Now, we are being told that the reason that this explosion seemed to spread across the land was because of the weather. It is extremely cold out here this morning and apparently that explosion has gone, it's, it's, the impact of it's gone through the land as opposed to up and into the air. And that's why so many houses seem to have been affected and damaged by the sheer impact of this explosion. And as I say, they haven't ruled out that there may be further explosions and certainly the cordon it seems to be getting bigger and bigger and people in the immediate area around that site have already been evacuated we've seen people collecting their belongings getting in their car and just going going to visit relatives um, obviously much further afield but um, obviously as it goes on this cordon I presume will get bigger and bigger and at some point um, we are expecting Hertfordshire Police to hold a press conference where we may get more details about certainly how this has happened. But at this stage, it does appear that it just seems to have been some sort of terrible accident. Sarah, you can't begin to imagine the misery of being woken up at six o'clock in the morning and suddenly realising that you've got 10 minutes to grab everything you can from your house because it's about to be engulfed in flame. Just too depressing words, really. You know this area, obviously, much better than any of us. Tell us how many houses there are round about that uh, old day. How many houses are we expecting have already been evacuated or may need to be evacuated? Well, I, I imagine it certainly in the immediate area. We're probably talking in the tens, but then in the outlying areas where I am, the houses haven't been evacuated, but they all have been affected. As I say, there's one house. Its front door has literally been blown off the hinges. Windows have come out. You can see plastic bags being taped up over windows in flats, in businesses, in houses. And, um, and as we say, it really, really does seem to have had a huge impact on at least certainly within a mile radius around this, um, quite a devastating impact, certainly in terms of 
damage. And I would imagine that d that damage will start to be running into the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds. And then that's, of course, before we even begin to think about what damage it has done to the actual oil depot itself and how that's going to affect um, the fuel that comes out of there. I mean, are we going to be looking at a fuel shortage? Who knows? I mean, there is an awful amount of fuel stored on that site. We've certainly had Anglia TV cameras up there before. And um, I was talking to a cameraman earlier who told me that there must be at least 30 or 40 tankers within that one site. There was that initial one explosion at 6 o'clock. That was followed by at least two more. And they have told us that there may even be more explosions. And that's why this evacuation is continuing to go on. And the cordon around this zone is continuing to get bigger and bigger. Well, Sarah, we're getting all sorts of information, as you can always expect in stories like this, breaking news stories coming into us here at the ITV News Channel. And uh, we've just heard from a driver, uh, a man who drives a tanker uh, at the terminal, and he said there were 20 tanks on the site. Now, imagine this. Each tank holds 3 million gallons of fuel. So potentially, uh, uh, potentially that's 60 million gallons of fuel. It's hard to take in that figure. It uh, could have gone up in smoke or at least is, is in danger of going up in smoke. I've no idea how the fire services could possibly hope to contain this level of fire. Uh, we're also hearing, you hardly need me to tell you this, that it's a scene of utter devastation, smell of gas, fire engines, a police car in the area and um, one eyewitness says that he believes that it looks as if now the whole depot is under fire. But we're hearing that Luton Airport, that's the airport near you, isn't it, Sarah? And so far that's, that's right. unaffected. A spokesman for Luton Airport says no flights have been affected by the explosion. And so far, at least, the smoke is not affecting the flight path, although an area near the site has been evacuated for flights. Well, I would imagine if there were flights that are due to come over this area that they certainly will be being diverted now because the size of the, the smoke cloud that's being generated by this explosion is absolutely enormous. I mean, as you said, that's about a five or six storey building um, behind me. And these, these clouds, 50 to 100 times the height of that. Um, so as you say, no, no effect at Luton Airport, but I'm sure if planes were due to be flying over this area, that they will be being diverted. Now, who's to say how long this fire is going to burn for? Like you say, the emergency services, um, they've come from all neighbouring counties as well as here in Hertfordshire. And I would imagine that um, th th even they can't get that close to it to even to begin to start um, dampening this fire down. I would imagine this is going to be burning for days, if not weeks. All right, Sarah, thank you very much for that. I don't see any fire engines there, Sasha, do you? And I would have thought this is well beyond the scope of the average uh, fire brigade. We're talking about a very specialist job putting out these kind of fires, aren't we? I think the suggestion seems to be that it's uh, pretty much uncontainable at the moment and it's just a question of waiting for it to uh, begin to die down of its own accord. But as, as the reporter said, uh, said very astutely there, that's going to take quite a long time because of the millions of gallons of fuel uh, that we assume are going to be in that uh, that oil depot. This is a sort of Red Adair job, isn't it? He was the guy who was always famous, wasn't he, for putting out uh, giant fires, that's right, oil that, fires. That's what we need at the moment uh, to try and... They would criticise us for what we...